Good morning, good afternoon, good night, whatever time you're watching this as always. Thanks for watching Common Sense Fishing. All right, so we've got a good video for you guys tonight. We've got the old whiteboard out. So we're going to break down late summer. Um, we might get into the fall transition a little bit. We'll break down some of the local lakes. So I'll start with McClure. We may be able to get more in, but uh, McClure is extensive enough. So we could probably talk about McClure all night. So we'll get into it, but <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Casper just drop kicked me real hard. <laughs> so uh, if you guys get a chance, smash that like button when you guys get on. And uh, share the video if you can. Let other people know what's going on. So got the whiteboard behind me. And tonight's video, we're going to be talking late summer all right so we got the whiteboard behind us here um we're going to be breaking down lake mcclure and uh showing you guys how i would fish lake mcclure give you guys some of my best spots some hot spots so to speak right now the lake's low so I'm going to give you some of the best hot spots when the lake's low. Now when it raises, there's going to be a lot of different stuff. Lake's going to flip and change. But uh, it's a different beast when it's low. So we'll explain that. Break it down. It's always low in the summer. Oxygen content is a big thing. The thermocline. <clears throat> so a lot of cool stuff. We're going to get into it uh, tonight. So smash that like button. How's it going, Charles? So we're talking about breaking down the local lakes. Tonight we're going to be breaking down Lake McClure. And basically it's a late summer fishing video. So we're going to talk about uh, some tips and tricks. Now I've got a cool little sketch or a video that is um, in the process of being made. And um, that is, it's going to be just over a minute or two long. It's hilarious. It's a little comedy intro to the channel. So we're going to be testing the waters with that, put that out, see how everyone likes it. I think it's funny. So we'll uh, hit everybody at one time so the members aren't going to get an early release on that one. I think I'm just going to shock everybody, see what everyone thinks. It's funny. It's cool, I think. Uh, it's just a little skit, and it's a uh, fishing channel skit like this, but it's um, got something else involved. So it's hilarious, but it's all clean. Um, you know, doesn't show anything bad, but there's just some funny jokes in it. Uh, we'll see how that goes, but that is, uh, coming out probably tomorrow or the next day. And I got two other videos coming out. One is a Delta video and the other one's a McClure video. So members, thank you guys. I think the, uh, Delta video just dropped today. If you guys want to go check that out. And, um, you know what? I'm going to release the uh, the funny video early to the members, but I'm only going to give you guys like half a day or a day with it. But uh, it's it's freaking funny. So we'll see how you guys like it, and then we're just going to go ahead and dump it on the public. But I think it's it, I think it's hilarious. But tonight, like I said, we're going to be doing uh, some whiteboard, you know, tips and tricks, talk about breaking down a lake in the – late summer, some of the changes that a lake goes through, and what to watch out for. All right, so tonight we're doing Lake McClure, and we're going to break the lake down into a few sections. Section number one, we're going to call uh, the north end. We're going to call it uh, Bagby. more 
different than this, but we're going to break it down for you guys. Folks, so we've got a rudimentary little map of Bagby real quick, right? So I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks if Bagby has water in it. Because a lot of the time during the summer, oxygen content is low. Bass will head north. Usually they'll head to any kind of, if there's any left snow melt, any incoming river water into the lake. They want to get that fresh oxygenated water. A lot of bass will sometimes move up into the uh, narrows where they can go from shallow to 40, 50 feet deep by simply doing this. Summertime and wintertime can kind of mimic each other and what bass like somewhat. So there's some similarity. Sometimes bass in the summertime will be split up all over the place, but a lot of the time you know, you can catch them shallow, so we're going to break down some lures on how to catch them, what are some of my favorite stuff to use to catch them. And bass will also go deep in the summertime, or at least down to a certain level where it's cooler, where the oxygen content's still there, because up by the top, when the water's getting cooked off, oxygen content starts dying off. Fish have to go to fresh water, or they have to go deep, All right? So, Bagby... This, I'm going to break down the spring really quick or not even, but I just want to break down when there's fresh water coming in, especially after full summer, any kind of fire season or just anything full summer. You get the first, you know, you get all that winter. And then when you get uh, your first really nasty stuff in spring and the lake starts rising, you get all this debris that plugs up Bagby like this right here and it blocks this corner off like this and you can still move around right it doesn't usually block the whole area off but it just the debris stacks up right here and the fish will be in here and you can't punch in there because it sticks and wood and all that but go and fish along the edge of that which that may be depending on how big the de debris field is that may be 40 to 50 feet or no i think it's like only 30 feet or something like that it's only so many feet deep because this is kind of a shallow slant and then it goes deep where you have the channel. But uh, basically what you want to use is things like crank baits, jerk baits, top water, sinkos, soft jerk baits like a fluke, stuff like that parallel to the edge of this whenever there's a debris field right there. That's a super awesome spot to fish. Okay. So now, and anyways, in the summer, there's obviously not a debris field. However, if there's water here, you'll notice in uh, Bagby at the very tip, if you can get past there, there's a little creek that goes this way with a little bridge that goes over it. You can even go up further or a little bit more, but uh, it gets super small, right? Like our actual river. So the fish really start stacking up in here. There's some nice spotted bass, some big large mouth. There's a sandbar like type thing right here. Um, and that'll be loaded with fish on this end and this end right here. They'll be on this point. But usually, especially in the summer, you're not going to be able to get anywhere near there. So you might be able to find some fishable spots in here. But right now, I think this is all dried up. And then as it does, this bridge, as the water lowers and lowers, as long as it has water and you can get to it, these pilings, any time of year, anyone knows that, they're good to fish. Now, the, the funny thing is a lot of guys fish the pilings near shore that are in 10 or 5 all the way down to 50 feet, whatever, right? But these pilings, nobody usually messes with, it, which is a mistake because bass will pull out even if it's over 150, 200 feet deep or whatever it is, and they'll suspend along those pilings. 
and you can see them on your the fish on your fish finder you can count down and stop like your lure in their face and pop it up and do some cool stuff let your lure fall right next to the pilings and then fish all four sides of them so because fish may stack up heavy on one side versus the other and then remember currents coming a certain direction so fish will usually load up a certain way but when this all starts getting low right a lot of this gets in fishable now this right here from bagby heads to uh horseshoe bend and it's called the narrows now the narrows is just imagine us another section like this that we took the bridge out right now back to bagby really quick of course the bridge is good the main point is good right here this point is good right here along the shoreline is good right here there's the old the old village i want to say the old town is right here so this can all be good stuff in here like i said the debris field and there's a big rock wall right here that's very steep that's always good for a few keepers right there drop shot and jig fishing doing stuff like that along that rock wall where there's a couple feet and then it drops off more and then it goes out more and then it drops off more and then there's kind of a flat out here believe it or not so um but this this big rock wall right here is really good um i've caught some fish inside of here a little bit not too far back in depends on the water level but the point of it has been really good and there's a couple little like offshoots and bays and like cuts on the way down that are pretty darn good. I don't remember them by heart. So like, let's say up here is Bagby and the bridge. Now the Narrows is a big old long trip until it opens up into Horseshoe Bend, right? So the Narrows is a bunch of steep stuff with points and there are occasional areas that open up just a little bit and there might be a cut or an area that goes back. Some of those can be super killer. Bass will stage along those big rock walls. So all in the narrows can be good spots. So when you're driving back, just stop and check in. And, and uh, if it looks good, just chill and fish it. Because there's a lot of rocks out there, a lot of different shelves and stuff that certain guys just love. Everybody has different little favorite spots over there. So the narrows can be really fun to fish. It, it can be real dangerous to fish too. Sometimes the wind is just howling through there, just screaming through there and you have big roller waves and you have boats zipping around and it can be tough to catch fish, but they're there. There's lots of fish in the narrows almost all the time. But right now with the lake as low as it is, I have not been fishing Bagby or the narrows. I'm just breaking them down for you from what, you know, normal lake levels so to speak right now once <clears throat> make sure this don't fall on us all right there we go now once you get the narrows opens up into <clears throat> this way there's a, something I lost like one point but um the, the, the my my size is way off because then this would open up this goes this way this is towards where I got my 10 pounder and uh, then this point will come out here and we can go like this. There's more open space. Something like that. All right. <clears throat> That's if it's full. Um, and this would even be bigger and then more to the right. Right? This the horseshoe bend campgrounds would be up up here, more this way. Uh, and this would be more full and more towards the right. So let's just say it's average or kind of low, like right now, even. Um, but you get the general gist. This is horseshoe bend. And this is coming from the narrows. Now there's a lot, there's a big shelf that goes out, but then there's like an island 
that goes this way. This is almost like a saddleback. It goes like this. This, when the lake level goes uh, low, there's kind of like an island right here that you've got to drive around to go up into the narrows, or you can cut across through the saddleback like area right here. But there's a rock pile and an island right here that depending on the lake level, if you're coming in to Horseshoe Bend before you hook a right and you see guys fishing kind of out in the middle in this general area right here, there's some island tops out there. And right now, you can see them, they're exposed. So guys have to drive around it, and then the sh this shore is much more in. All of these bays and stuff are sucked in, and the water level is probably way down in here, if not lower. I haven't been up into that arm in a minute. But as the water pulls off, the fish will pull back and pull out too. They pull out, they go deeper, uh, or they suspend. <clears throat> and some fish are super smart and aware of the water pulling out and they'll actually stage on like really nice structure uh, logs rocks boulders and they'll be right up shallow and they kind of follow the water down and they're just waiting an ambush for something you know moving by <clears throat> so even when the lake level is lowering you will have fish shallow but a big majority of them will pull off right so this is horseshoe bend Right now here, there's a couple of points on this end that are really good. There's a all into here can be good. This wall back here can be good. Back in to where the water comes in, kind of in the back, can be really good. Along the wall here to a certain extent can be good. As the water pulls off, there's these big, like, uh, shelves and drop-offs those can all hold fish like all right here really nice and uh i believe there's one more island out here there's the one right here and so this point you can catch some little fish on i've never really got anything too big you can catch some fish out here on this point on the saddleback but usually the bigger fish will be stacked on the rock piles on the shelves in the back here, as the water pulls out, they'll pull out. Some of these main lake points are killer. But Horseshoe is not like, let's say, my favorite stomping ground. I like to go there. It's a big, shallow area, and the bass spawn there. They love, you know, that's a good spawning area. So there's a lot of flat, plain stuff. <laughs> it's a great spot to go throw a jig, too. There's not a lot of trees, not a lot of snags there. So... All of this is just kind of rock and dirt type stuff, not mud, more like compact, hard dirt, you know? So, and the little rock and big rock and stuff too. And there's some boulders, boulder piles. There's some piles in the back and the arm that are really nice. Um, you know, there's a couple of good spots out there, if you know. And, the, and in the back here in the corner, there's a couple. You'll spot them. It's hard to kind of do this from memory, but... In the back, there's it kind of does a, a V almost, or it goes into two directions, and both can be pretty good. So um, you'll see guys shooting back in there. That's where you want to go fish in the back of these arms. <clears throat> now let's talk about heading down McClure this way. So I hope you guys like these whiteboard videos here. So how's it going? Smash that like button if you guys want. Well, we're breaking down McClure really quick for you guys. We're going to talk about, uh, in my opinion, the five best. That was spot number two, by the way. The five best, or probably cheat and say like the ten best lures for late summer. How to use them, where to use them. <clears throat> so, all right. Now, number three would be Thank you. 
there's a bay back in one of these ones. I forget which one it is. This isn't exactly the scale, mind you, but it's the general idea. All right, <clears throat> now this is horseshoe bend right here, right? This is going back towards the campgrounds now and the main coming this way, right? This, this is uh, towards the Narrows and Bagby. And this is horseshoe bend, let's say. Kind of semi fair representation. So I was talking about back here, there's like a cut kind of, and back here, there's a cut kind of like this. And both of these areas and all along here can be really good, as well as there's a bunch of spots. And you'll see them when you see kind of plain shore, and then you see the big rocks and stuff. That will keep going underwater. Cast on those. Start from shallow, move deep, you know. A um, couple different ways I'd fish McClure, so we'll break that down here in a second as well. I'm just kind of breaking the lake down and kind of going, hey, how's it going? Keeping it real nice to see you on. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Smash that like button if you get a chance. We're doing a live stream whiteboard. I'm breaking down Lake McClure. If you've got a river lake, a chain lake, if you're in the East Coast, West Coast, it doesn't matter, mid Mid America, as long as you have some current in it, this is more of a steep lake, a lot of rocks. So this information will help. So the current, naturally, what it does is, is it flows down here, and a lot of it goes in here. But this is a big shallow bowl compared to this is a big deep cut. So a lot of water heads this way too, right? And uh, this has a bunch of water. But as the lake starts draining and becoming drier and drier this all starts pulling back and then it just becomes this gets cut off and there's a little trickle here right well this right here when the lake was like about two-thirds or three-quarters away full this point right here is where i got my double digit right here and it's on video you guys you know i'm sure most of you guys seen that and uh there's a, a train down there, there's a train thing like this, and then there's like a, a pathway that goes across, and then there's a train thing right here like this when the lake gets low, and then the path goes like this, right, but the lake's high right now, or it's low right now, but the, I drew it to say hi. So this is where I got my fish right now. Now through here, there's a couple of big points and shelves and uh, like areas where there's some shelves or some drop offs and there's like a nice flat right there. Fish will hold up and uh, cause the current comes around like this and there's some plain stuff. There's a lot of rocks. There's some different uh, points, secondary points. There's a lot of cool structure on this side of the shore over here. This side, okay. I see a lot of guys fishing it, but I've traditionally done much better uh, fishing this side of the shoreline and again here's where I got my double digit now heading down this end of the lake we've done a, a lot of damage right here all along here all along here all along this kind of stuff even when the lake levels higher right this cove has been pretty cool when the lake's full but right now it's all low so there's certain rock wall stuff out here you can fish where it's real vertical 
and the fish can move up and down, up and down. That's where you're going to want to use different kinds of lures. Throw something where you pull your boat up really close to shore. So a lot of guys, when I see them fishing, they're fishing with their boat pointed at shore, and they're casting towards shore, right? What you want to do is fish this place like the delta and know that the current is pulling things this way, right? So the fish are probably facing into the current. What you want to do is cast and bring and, and put your boat facing this way and right alongside the wall, like to where you can touch the wall and cast and work your bait parallel as far as things like top water, jerk baits, crank baits, things like that. And then if you're gonna bottom bounce, swing around and pull out to the 45. And that's when you do that kind of cast at the shore, but you stay in the strike zone a little bit longer because you're not going straight down through it. You're kind of slashing your way through it. So you give yourself a few extra feet of being in that strike zone. So it depends on what you're fishing and how you fish it. But <clears throat> right now, you can see some of these pillars right here on the right-hand side. Now, down here would be Arnold Bay, okay? This is going into Horseshoe Bend. This is going up into Bagby. This is where I got my 10-pounder. There's a lot of nice little schools of spotted bass, usually, that you can get off of these rock piles. You can get some keepers or some decent-sized fish. So I'd fish that whole stretch, kind of hot scotch it, and look for good stuff that stands out. Or if you have anything marked or you know, as the lake level raises and, and lowers, there'll be debris and things down here even deeper that you can't see, right? Just as when the lake level raises, a lot of guys don't know there's these big pillars, there's these cuts and little roads, and they don't know until they expose themselves. And there's also some pillars, some other stuff we're going to show you, the old dam, all that good stuff. So there's too many places to talk about. That's why I'm kind of running over it quickly. So <clears throat> fresh haircut, looking good. Thanks, brother. Had to go get one. I got a special skit coming up where I'm doing something kind of funny. And uh, we'll see how you guys like it. Hope you guys like it. So anyways, smash that like button. And feel free to uh, drop any questions, any comments, anything you guys want to yap about. I'm watching the comments from over here but I'm trying to stay focused on breaking down Lake McClure, breaking down the lake in general. So if your lake's like this, you can see current swings, the direction of the river, which way the river flows. So you know, okay, that's upriver, this is downriver, so the current's this way. Then you can, you know, you can see how things work out. You can position your boat certain ways. There's a lot of good points and structure on this side of Horseshoe Bend. There's a lot of good stuff in the back here, some good shelves. Now, when the lake's full, there's a lot of good stuff in the back near the campgrounds. Um, there's some stuff, you know, this isn't all to scale. The way this pulls back like this, there's some stuff on this side that's okay. There's a lot of offshore stuff out here in Horseshoe Bend that you really want to put in your graph because it can be tough finding it at first when it's submerged. But when it's not, you can see it, right? And uh, so you want to find the rock piles and the stuff that's on that. Because a lot of that is just sandy, just kind of sandbars that are out in the middle. But there's some rock piles on them. So anyways, down river we go. We're heading towards Arnold Bay now. So we're going to go ahead and show Arnold Bay. Piney Creek. Hope you guys enjoy the new format. We're going to do this just for a little bit. Uh, break down Lake McClure for you guys. Give you guys some tips and tricks. We'll talk about like some of the lures that I would throw right now, where I would throw them on the lake. So I'm giving you guys the visual of the lake, giving you some of the hot spots so that when I talk about them, I can also come back to the board and kind of redraw them for you. But uh, that's cool where I can put some pictures to my ideas. So hopefully you guys like this. So again, let me know, smash that like button, share the video, let everybody know, you know, we kick it, we have a good time here. We have fun, we talk about a lot of cool stuff. We help kids for Christmas. We're doing all kinds of cool things. So best fishing community around. Smash that subscribe if you're new here. Anyways, we're going to break down Arnold Bay now. So 
let's see, where would probably be the best spot? Let's say right about here is where you come in, and that's the main lake, and it's just some weird rock, and then there's kind of a cut, and then the bow out, and then in, and then it would go normally way back in here, right? And there's a waterfall back here, right? And then along this shoreline, the waterfall goes like this. And then there's this big point that comes out like this. But it's all, this would all be underwater. Right now it's out. So I'm drawing like this. The water would go over this. And there's a big rock pile right here. It's super awesome. Uh, this doesn't even do it justice. I need to shrink it down a little. All right. So let's say this is the waterfall. And then you have this is the point. Yeah, this is better. And you have it goes right around. But yeah, it goes right around this way. Swoops around. There's a cut that goes like in here. And then there's a cut that goes in here. There's one that goes right up in here, I think. And then you have the big point like this. And then it comes around. And then it basically does a bunch of hills like this. It has like a kind of point. Starts going back, has like a cut or two, and goes way back here. And then across the way here, let's see. Um, we'll say it's like right here. You have where the point starts. And then it goes around this wall, and then it cuts in. And then there's like this, goes this way. And it fills in. There's that. There's a couple of shelf for like points like this. And it goes way into the back there. And that's Piney Creek, right? Arnold Bay, Piney Creek. I think Arnold Bay would be a little bigger actually to scale. Uh, yeah. Sorry, guys, I'm all acting like a perfectionist now. Let's just get it halfway to scale. Something like that, maybe. It'd be bigger and deeper. This way. A little more. That probably. Sorry, guys. Like that. More like that. All right. Now, then on this side, you have where it wraps around. Does like this. Comes back around. Just like this. Comes back in. Comes back out. And then that's the main lake right here. And then head this way. There is the here, <clears throat> something like that. The houseboats sit in here. Houseboats sit in here. And uh, this is coming from um, Horseshoe Bend, right? So. <clears throat> Then you have Barrett's way over here. Barrett's would be right down here. And there's like a uh, island out here. And, uh, yeah. So, this whole shore is good for deep cranking and holding fish on all that rock. And there's trees and stuff, so beware. There's a lot of snags. But this whole shoreline, is the, the current comes this way. 
this this point here, this main lake point here, and up to around right about here for me has always been good. This has been uh, so-so, but up in here has been really good. And then this steep wall, this point right here, the way it juts out, um, really good. And all in here has been good for me before. My buddy got a 13-pounder right there on a deep dive and crankbait, 13 and a half. I've caught a lot of fish all along this point. This whole shoreline has been loaded to fish up to a certain point where it becomes vertical. Then they've only held fish certain times of the year for me. But whoa, a lot of the times, though, who set this up? Yep. Who set this up? Man, shh. <laughs> A lot of the times, though, this shoreline's been pretty good to me. In here, and this little cut has been good to me in the wintertime if it's full, in the summertime if it's full, out off of it. But more so, this island top has held a lot of fish for me. Um, but you can also, where you have all these houseboats in here, you can jerk bait, swim bait, and use like a soft jerk bait, a Cinco weightless, um, crankbait, wake bait, stuff like that alongside the houseboats and have a lot of fun just smashing them. They'll come out, boom, and there'll be lots of fish under the houseboats. I mean, where every houseboat will have a few fish almost. Uh, there'll be times when they're just loaded underneath there. I mean, not like that, that bad, but like where it's worth it and they're big fish. You'll go and catch two or three and they'll be really worth it. Then you might get three or four that are like, all right, that was cool, you know, but uh, it, it can usually pay off, you know, not all the time. There else I'd always be doing it, right? But um, it has worked and paid off. So same thing in Barrett's Cove. Let's just say this was Barrett's Cove right here where they have those, the tire things that go like this, and then they, they go around like this, and then they go around like this. Well, if you jerk bait and, and do the same thing that I just said on the outside of these, you kill it. It used to be 10 times better when they were the big old giant black monster truck tires. Now there is these like paddle looking like uh, wave absorption technology devices or something. They used to just be giant uh, tires like all all chained together you know and uh so it was crazy but uh when it when it was those monsters in there monsters and you'd fish the tires that it was so worth fishing when there were tires now they still hold a lot of fish as those little whatever they are the little wave suppression devices or whatever the little floats and you can see they have paddles that move um so anyways uh jerk bait crankbait, you know, stuff like that alongside that. Really killer. And uh, this main lake point has been really good to me. This main lake point has been good. Sometimes in the cuts here, when the lake's dropping and you're early summer or late spring and you got the grass and all that still, this these little cuts can be good when they're like that. But these main lake points are here. Now, when you head down this way, there's some pillars where the uh, old bridge ran across. So I'll show you guys that next. But um, this is also one of my favorite stomping grounds. In here in Arnold Bay is where me and my daughter got 130 fish pretty much all day. Just right here, fished, we fished this shoreline right here. We fished this point. We fished all in here. And then we fished all of this. And we did that for like... Eight to ten hours and got 130 fish. Had a blast. So that video is like an hour long. So if you want to check that out, it's uh, it's one of my older videos. But all right. So moving on. Now I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's uh, show. I know you know maybe everybody isn't a Lake McClure local, but uh, the idea is is if your lake has um, you know, the similar structure, if it's a, you got a picture of Lake McClure. If you're not from here, look it up, right? And if your lake looks like that, all these same spots are going to be where you're going to want to fish. Fish the transitions where you see dirt to rock, where you see gravel to rock or mud, where you see 
grass where there's nothing else and there's all this grass right there, when you see different, when you see things that stand out, they also are big, bold, pieces of wood, lumber, trees, bridges, pylons, anything structurally is an obvious giveaway. But what you can't see under the water is equally important. So also a topographical map and learning how to look for islands. I'm going to do a real quick bonus segment on how to find an island on a topographical map. So say summertime, uh, suspended fish over islands over like 100, 200 feet of water normally where it would look like, but really it's only 40 feet deep. And all around you is 150, 200 feet deep, but you have this one spot where there's a couple mountains and there's, you know, 25 to 40 feet deep, you know, right there. And nobody knows that stuff's there. So you'll see times where you see anglers fishing in the middle of nowhere and you have no clue what the hell they're doing. And it looks like they're above 200 feet. Um, they're doing something like that. And so how you find that is a topographical map has a bunch of lines. So when they do a shoreline, let's say there's a point like this and uh, it goes like this. But uh, to just to tell us what kind of shore this is, there may be big lines like this and then they may get really close together and then start to open apart and then get really close together All right and do this You guys get the point here? Topographical map, right? So this would be a steep shelf. This would be a point that's really steep, right? The tapers open, but when you see this and then out away, see, then you see a line here. That means, okay, it's the same depth generally, right? And then you see this right here. That's like a rock pile or something like a tip on where this was a mountain coming down. And then it does like a saddleback where it goes really down deep and then it comes back up, right? So this would be the floor, the bottom, right? Which might be. 80 feet deep let's just say it goes down real steep right and this could be you're fishing in 60 feet or 80 feet right here right and what right here it's maybe only 20 25 feet or 20 feet right here 40 mm -hmm. feet right and then it's 60 and the next one is 80 right so you see how the and then as it as the lines get tighter, so when you see, you can see the shoreline, and when you see groupings of things out here, and you see the shore and the next ripple, but then here you see something like this. This is another island right here, right? And then depending on the lines around it, and then how many tight lines there are in the middle tells you how tall or how big the island is and how wide and long it is, right? So, for example, let's just say um, there's some open water right here, and uh, here's the shore. It comes in like this and then moves along like that. This little spine right here may, may, go, may continue, right? So it may go... Then right here, maybe it's curving even, right? And then right here it comes back up. And then you see, then you see something like but then you see a bunch of packed lines right here. 
that tells you that this goes deep, turns, and then starts to come back up, and then sharply comes up. So this would be like an island top might be sticking out of water or just under, whatever type stuff. But this is how, when you're looking at a topographical map and you're seeing the lines and you're seeing everything, right, and you're looking at it and you're like, well, how do I read it? When you see these things offshore uh, that look like they either go down or back up, right, you can't tell, but that's what that means. It means they're either going down or up in elevation. And so when you're at a stagnant line like this, and then you go across here, this would either indicate a really deep hole, but it would have a topographical map, if I remember correctly, has lines to indicate a hole or a pit. So it would be a uh, it would be a mountain. So that's how you can tell islands. Now they won't all look so obvious like that, but that's the idea. They're not they're not really hard to find. So a McClure, if you know how to read a topographical map, I'm, I recommend for any of your lakes. If you know how to read a topographical map, you're going to find some magic that is underwater that nobody knows about because the map will reveal to you without having to graph the whole lake and waste your time smashing around. So, hey, Tard, when you're going to shoot me your kill a song with kill a tay? <laughs> this guy, that's my brother right there. Oh, let's see, I'll hit the show. I don't know if I still have that song on CD, dude. I only have so many of my old songs on CD. So, old, old shite. Have some old stuff. But anyways, all right, so we had done Arnold Bay and Piney. So let's just say this is Arnold Bay going into Piney here. And then Piney comes out, kind of goes back into another little creek arm here. And then goes along, then it goes in. No, not quite like that. Um, yeah, it is like this. And then this is Barrett's. Goes like that. And then Hugs the wall like this, and the main point here comes around, swoops around some, some stuff like this, and you have to go back in here, back there. Here is like that, what is that? The big house on the hill sits right here. And this kind of looks like lava rock right here, if you guys know what I'm talking about. There's the big green house on the uh, big green house on the hill right there. And right here, right about here, should be the pilings should start to show up at McClure now. And I'll go across. There's not that many. <laughs> And then right here is the old wreckage of the bridge right here. And so um, if you can get into Barrett's and if you know, you're fishing where you can legally fish, you can fish in there. But just so far away from all the pumps and stuff. This shoreline right here is killer. We've caught a couple double digits. There's been a lot of Mondo fish caught out right there. And even back in here and along here can be really good. Um, and around this point right here is awesome. This is a good, decent little run right here. This bridge will hold a lot of fish, but snag city. And uh, these two pylons will be good to bottom bounce, like bottom contact along them and around them. Depending on how low the lake gets, maybe even this one. But uh, ones that are out here will be your suspended ones. You want to fish just like the bridge. You can fish them. Just don't throw your lure down into 100 feet of water. Fish all four sides. Fish it suspended. You know, count down. You know, it doesn't hurt to get up and try to graft alongside them. See how deep the fish are. Back off. And on each each piling, they should be in a similar depth then. Um, but, you know, if you found one on yours, that may be the key piling. They may not be on every one. 
But, uh, you know, especially if you no notice that they're in, let's say, the 25-foot range, then come out here and go to 25 feet or 30 feet, right? So cast right at the wall. And so if the fish are in one or two feet, the lure is going to fall past the, that fish. And then let it fall down to 30, 40 feet. Then stop it, pop it, work it around. Reel it slowly up, stop it, pop it, work it around. Reel it slowly up, stop it, pop it, work it around. And then reel it the rest of the way. Kind of like crappie fishing. And you can get these suspended bass that are around these pylons. Super easy way to whack them like that. So, um and again, this this shoreline can can be good because there's there's those there's like one of these I think right here. So this is all good right here. Uh, these cuts in here can hold fish right around there. This the current sweeps around here, so sometimes you can pick some randos off, but uh, I'm, I don't usually do too good. Sometimes there's a couple fish you can get a couple decent ones back here uh, around this on this uh, shoreline. But uh, when you get to where all that like lava rock stuff is at back in here in the cut, this stuff is super good. This whole shoreline can be really good. Back in here can be really good. There's a rock pile over here that's really good. Um, then you get to Barrett's South Ramp. Jackass Island or Donkey Island or whatever. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and the lake, the water's moving this way. And this is the main body. This is Barrett's Cove right here. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'm not boring you guys. Of course, we're going to kick it, talk, chill, do like we always do. But uh, I wanted to do a little something different and see if you guys like it see how you guys feel about it and uh you know it's just basically a breakdown of lake mcclure and any lake like this will will be similar basically or should uh, and each area of the country is different but you guys might just be let's say behind us a little bit because uh in the summer like usually the east coast of certain areas are frozen while we're still already in spawn or something so, I mean, you'll be late in that sense. But then usually you're the first to get, like, the winter. So the bite might switch over there quicker. I'm not sure. I'm not from the East Coast. But uh, I know that uh, it's going to be hot here until August, September, easy. And then October, it can still be brutally hot. And uh, usually we start getting our first rain around Halloween. So right around harvest moon, right? And... Uh, November and December is when it gets wet and cold here. And so that fall transition usually doesn't happen until September, October. In some areas, I don't know if it happens earlier or what. But uh, this is a canyon lake, a lot of rock, not a lot of trees here. So finding, when you fish shorelines, finding areas where the shore looks plain, and then there's just some rocks and boulders right here. And the rest of this just looks like whatever. This is going to be where you're going to want to fish. McClure is very spot individual. There will be a lot of fish stacked on one spot. Or in a cove with a bunch of bait fish hovering. They do that a lot. They suspend at McClure too a lot. So a blade bait, a spoon, a jigging spoon, top water. As those schools will come up. And then they'll come down. So top water is an excellent way to get them. Now, one thing I want to talk about is when fishing a lake like McClure, especially in the summer when fish are more active and you can power fish a little more, instead of instead of taking your boat and throwing a crankbait at the shore and running it for two feet and then bringing it out and doing this with it, all right, don't do that. Take your boat and get right up against shore, even if you're a foot or two off and you're standing in the front here, right? Well, then cast your crankbait or whatever here and run it right along shore. And then, whoa, and then your next one, right? Then your next cast a little farther out. And then your next one, and then your next one, 
And then if you're using a shallow, you might want to stop there. Right? And then you move forward and you do the same thing along this shoreline and along this one. And you know, and then you pull your boat up. You're always up shallow, running your crankbait as parallel as possible. And then you can get fish. Even let's say your, your square bill only goes down five or six feet. You'll get fish that are down 10 feet to come up four or five feet, six feet to meet it and say, I'll, I'll eat that because you see it go overhead. And it's, if you're going slow enough or stop and then jerk and then go and then go, and then fit, oh, I want that. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> don't be afraid, especially during these times of year, to fish the, the lakes. I like to say kind of like I would say you fish the delta. And then I, I see a lot of guys fish the delta like that too. Um, and again, if I think if you're using a bottom bouncer or certain presentations, then sure, a shore downcast is, is fine, like a jig or a drop shot, where especially where what you're trying to do is find a depth pattern. So say you've got these rocks right here, and you know that there should be on this point, but you don't know, you know, your fish finder says there's some here and there's some there. You cast all the way up to shore and you work it down. And then if you get bit close to shore, hey, there's some shallow. If you work it halfway down, you get bit in 20 feet, uh-oh. Hey, take your next one, cast it up to shore, work it down, you get bit in 20 feet. Now you got a pattern. Now you can kind of take your boat and cast it into 18 feet and then work it kind of parallel through 21 feet or whatever so that it goes through that sweet spot for a lot longer of a time than if you were casting like this, if that makes sense. So let's do a, a zoomed in version of, of that. If you guys don't mind, I kind of want to make sure it makes sense when I say that. So let's just say this was a shoreline and we're going to zoom, it's zoomed in. And uh, we're gonna, we all know the pilings are good. We're going to get out. We're going to leave this spot here in a minute and go down to Barrett South and Mid Lake and also kind of temperance, heading into temperance. And then right around the corner is McClure Point. And then that, you got McClure Point, temperance, you got the dam, and then you got Cotton Creek. So we'll go over all of those. We're going to break the whole lake down for you guys, seriously. So I hope, you know, smash that like button and uh, leave a comment, give a brother some uh, encouragement, let him know he's doing a good job and uh, appreciate it. So let's just say this is a shoreline here, though, right? And um, there's all this craggle stuff, and there could be a bass laid up wherever, right? If, let's say, So let's just call this the shallow or zero to 10 feet. Let's call this 15 to 25 or 15 to 30 feet. Then let's call this 35 to 60. And I'm saying because that's kind of the general zones, right, for uh, summertime fishing. Well, yeah, some of it overlaps, right? So let's say you got these three depths now you find after fishing for an hour that three or four three out of four of your bites came in in uh, let's say this strike zone so you know they're there and you didn't get you got one let's say here and you didn't really get any here or you haven't fished that much yet there but you got three out of four there throughout the lake. Now, if your boat is here, right, your boat's back here, and you cast it shore like this, and you work your lure down, right, and you cast your shore, your lure right on the shore, and you pull it down, and you work it down, and then you reel it back in, right, and you cast your lure, and yeah, a little rock there, all right, well, work it down, oh, I got a bite, right, whatever. Cast it into the back here, shoot, hop it around and down, shoot, work it in, right? And you do that, la la la. Let's say you catch 
you do that the whole time. You cover this whole stretch of shore. And you catch two fish. And you know, because you had four, three or four earlier, that they're in this strike zone. You're only getting, you're only getting, let's see here. You're only getting this much of each cast of the shaded area, right? The shaded area is how much usefulness you're getting out of your cast, let's say, once you establish the pattern. So if you know, hey, they're, uh, they're in this strike zone, you are getting this much out of your cast. Does that make sense? So if you now, let's redo this real quick. All right. Now, if you take your boat and you cast like this, or better yet, cast even more like this. See what that's doing? You're staying in the strike zone much more. You're still going to have a little bit of wasted, but you have a lot more in that zone so you're gonna you're gonna uh <laughs> yeah i needed to cut on brother <laughs> yeah hey shout out side neck if you guys haven't seen side neck check your boy side neck out i don't know that dude at all i have no affiliation but his shite is funny side neck yeah yeah, ah, dude is awesome. I give y'all permission. I swear, not not like you need it, but uh, if you want, go take off real quick. Watch one of Side Neck's videos and come back and, and discuss on the live screen live stream what you don't or do like about him. You're gonna either hate him or love him, and I have a feeling that almost everyone gets his jokes, humor, and will love him. Um, and you. You can't explain it. You have to see it to believe it. So go on YouTube, search up Side Neck, yeah, and check your boy out. <laughs> I love it, I swear. For all you fishing people, probably think I'm crazy, but it's funny, I swear to God. Dude's awesome. So anyways, yeah, how to break down a spot, too, a little tip there. Get more, especially during the summer, active times, and during the spring. Get yourself... Get your boat, swing it more, put your boat more parallel to shore and make your cast like this. Or even get right up along shore and make your cast like this. Your whole darn cast is in the strike zone. <laughs> right? Just pull your boat right into the strike zone. You're going to scare some fish here and there, but whatever. Yeah! I'm going to be stuck saying it now. See? He's contagious. <laughs> Side neck gets a number. Side neck goes swimming. <laughs> Looking for my dad. All right. We'll go ahead and erase this. There's so much to cover right there. It's crazy. Like this whole spot right there, there's just, there's a lot of magic in that little area too. And, uh, I know I left some stuff out. It, it's I'm sorry. It's just the dam lake is so huge. There's so many awesome little rock piles and little spots here and there that make you know that lake magical. But so, anyways, <clears throat> all right. Little break real quick from the whiteboard. What do you guys think about the whiteboard? Um, any critique? Do you think it's a, a good good uh, break from the norm? 
Uh, would you like to see me try to break down a lake that uh, in your area? Or tips and tricks on the whiteboard, like how to work a worm or a lure in certain things and why it feels a certain way and what you can do, like let's say in grass or weeds. Because a lot of people get frustrated because they get grass and weeds on their lure and it affects the way that it works, the way that it feels. They don't feel comfortable. You don't get bit like that. But there's ways that you can easily clear your lure or debris. So I can easily show you guys tips and tricks, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I need to change the lighting, period. I need to get another light. I'm going to put it over here. Yeah, you see, guys, you guys can see my setup. I have a five light, but only four of them are working right now. So um, the lighting in the room isn't the greatest. I'm working on it. I need to get another lamp. That's just the cheap stuff, too. Um, and really set the lighting up a little better. Put a drape something over it just to make it a little softer and to get more light in here so it's coming from different angles and it all kind of blends better. Um, I know, but uh, I need to do your, you know, I need to do that. So working on it though, but uh, thank you, JJ NorCal. Appreciate the uh, uh, comment there. So let's uh, finish up here with. Um, where should we start on this side? I think we'll start with the little rock, the house point area with the rock wall here. And it goes back kind of. And then there's like a cut here and it goes like this, I think. There's a big waterfall and a big rock one here. And then you have a regular one. Oh, and I don't remember the rock formations here. I think there's this big sweeping one out here in a point like this. All right. We have south ramp. Goes this way. Um, where does it go? Now this goes. Further there, I'm gonna say about right here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm stuck now. You guys got to check out Side Neck. Man, dude is funny, he's awesome. He's got way more subscribers than I do. I mean, but hey, I'll send them all of mine if they want to go check him out. But he's Funnier than heck. This thing has points on it and stuff too. <laughs> Same on this side a little bit, right? And wrap around here. And go in like this. It goes back and up here. And then you have the McClure Point right out here and the Boat Club. The Boat Club would be down here in this corner. Temperance would be starting right over here. This is kind of a south ramp. This is right here, let's just say. So this is south ramp. This would be sometimes, I think, a slalom course or whatever, depending on lake level. You can usually shoot through here. Um, you shoot across this way, right? And... Uh, I think there's an island out here, right here, somewhere. Yeah, so this has been known as a donkey island because the donkeys got stuck out there. There's the house on the hill is up here. There's a rock pile, nice rock pile right here. This whole shoreline can be good. There are some uh, points here that are good, some boulders. There's like a waterfall. I don't remember one of those right here. There's a couple of main lake spots you can crank and do stuff. You can catch fish when they're moving. This is like a highway, and it's plain, and there's not a lot of debris. There's not a lot of, hey, thanks for uh, becoming a member. So um, 
yeah, I'll do Don Pedro for sure next. That's the idea. We're going to do McClure, Don Pedro, New Maloney's, Tulick. We're going to name each arm, each creek arm, each island that I know of or area, break it down the best that I can, give you all my memories, talk about the videos, um, talk about all that good stuff. What lake do you mean? This is uh, McClure. So the whole video tonight, we've been uh, breaking down McClure. I started with Bagby up by the river where the bend comes in. We talked about the Narrows. Uh, we talked about Arnold Bay, Piney Creek. We talked about uh, Barrett's Cove and uh, kind of the Arnold Bay mid-lake area with the pillars, the bridge. Um, so we're talking about all that. Right now, this is where South Ramp would be. Whoa. So... <clears throat> I'm giving you guys all my juice, basically, all my milk runs, how I'd fish McClure. You guys know I'm not no pro or anything, but how to at least get five, how to how to get some fish, some confidence, and then from there you can take it. I mean, there's also ways to get big fish. Like I said, when you're fishing a shoreline, it's not like this is all magic. Maybe it is, but the point is, is maybe right here there's uh, some big rocks and then the rest of this is kind of like shale stuff. And they'll be fish right off of whatever's different. They may not be super on the main lake point. They may be right here where there's something different. The McClure, spot, spot the stuff that is different. Look for big rock. Look for stuff that gives cover, shade, has, has spots and places in it that have nooks and crannies big enough for a good-sized bass to tuck in there. You know, you'll notice a lot of these big ones have these mutilated tails because they're super smart. And they'll tuck in underneath all these big boulders and rocks, and they'll tuck underneath and they'll wait for fish to come by to come out and ambush them, right? And those are the trout eaters, the bluegill eaters, crappie eaters, the other they eat other bass. They're the giants. They're the Bahamas. But you can also catch them on jigs, drop shots. They're also opportunistic. So if you put a lure right in front of its face and it doesn't have to work real hard, a big bass will eat a tiny little dinky lure. Problem is, is in the summertime, when that bass is full of energy and is not lethargic, the, the lure that you hook that big bass on uh, depends on your chances of you landing it, which is why things like a good solid single hook lure like Texas rig, a jig, um, and then big treble hook lures like swim baits, top water lures, jerk baits, certain things that are big enough gear can catch those big monster fish. Big spinner baits too, big single hook stuff, chatter baits. Uh, but they're going to be on the different stuff there. So McClure has now is now remember as soon as you get past Barrett's Cove and you get to the pillars and there's the the bridge is now on the other oh. side. So now on every point, there's going to be the train. The train bridge goes everywhere. So you got to remember the train. The train, literally, it goes, there's tunnels. And when you see them, the train will go through a tunnel, right? So there's a tunnel, I think, right here. And then I think there's another one on the boat side. And then there's one on McClure Point, so boat club. Right, so but when the train does that, there'll be roadways cut out for the train, and then you'll see here when the water does this, and uh, there's like a, a pathway that blocks it, and this fills in like a pool, right? As the water gets lower, so the now the train now the old train is on this side of the lake. It's not on this side anymore. So you got to keep that in mind. It, it runs all the way. So when you see the tunnels. You know that on the main lake, there's not going to be any of this stuff. But before you get to the first tunnel, all the main lake stuff inside of this area here, when the water level's full, all have these rock piles just like around the corner did and all up through the narrows has. Those little triangular rock piles because they had to cut big old gouges into the mountain to run the train through the tracks. So, um, and then remember there'll be a shelf too, like basically a road. So if there's a something that cuts in, and let's say there's a tunnel here, and then you know that it's going to connect across the way, then there may be a drop-off here, 
and a drop off here and kind of built like a sandbar bridge that connects this and this. There's plenty of those in the lake and those fish will stack on those and on the drop offs on those. So this, uh, this island can hold a lot of fish on it, but usually I do good on the front end of it right here. I do good on uh, south ramp right there. I do good on the tail end, back end right here. I'll catch some in here. This actually, there's like a big sandbar thing right here that goes across right there. Um, like I said, there's like a waterfall with big rocks here. Now, these two shorelines right here, if I remember correctly, is general areas before you get to Temperance over here. This is Temperance and then McClure Point Boat Club down here. These two shorelines, these are like highways for the fish. So the water and currents travel in here. So you have this big open area. So around here where it looks kind of plain and this island top right here, there'll be a lot of fish that congregate and stop on this island or that hold along these shorelines. Now over here, right, they'll stop and they'll go in here sometimes, but usually they'll just cut straight across. They'll just go, I mean, I don't, I don't know, but I've seen them on the fish finder, big schools of them moving like this. That's why I'm kind of showing you when they're in a when they're in a strike zone or a depth. When let's say I pull up and I notice there, I see a bunch of fish in 30 feet or 25 feet, and then I look and they'll go across here. There may be a smidgen of a few here, a bunch kind of stacked in here, but they'll they'll use it. It's like a highway. They're they're moving along, and sometimes they'll stop and rest, or you'll just have big groupings of them. And then sometimes you'll be chilling. There'll be nothing on your fish finder. And then all of a sudden, a big grouping of them will come underneath you. And that's where you can just sit here and just bottom bounce, drop shot if they're in that depth zone. Deep crank, there's a couple of things. So we're going to talk about my favorite lures to use as soon as we're done breaking the rest of the lake down. So let's read some. Um, uh, Evan did awful there. That junior turned me too. He said, oh, we saw the train tunnel exposed. So cool. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, it, it was a tough, a tough trip. Um, I went with the Buffalo boys and went out there and, uh, kind of like showed them around and was like, all right, guys, these are just the places, my little honey holes. This is what I'm doing tonight for you guys. So there have a lot of them and they change you depending on, on time of day when one's getting all the sun or whatever have you, I might crisscross the lake a little, find out what side I like better. But, uh, uh, I'll tell you what I usually avoid, you know, what, what I, or at least what I get when I get fish in certain spots. For example, this spot right here, this whole side of the lake going from Barrett's to Temperance, where there's a kind of like plain stuff, there's a lot of fish that will be cruising up and down that shoreline. And I highly recommend using deep cranks slowly. You get them down deep. So you start them fast. You long line them or ultra cast, right? Use the wind if you have to. Cast with the wind. And send that thing a mile. And then as soon as it hits the water, start cranking on that sucker with your pole tip really deep and crank fast. And then after about two, three seconds or two seconds, not even maybe a second and a half, slow down all of a sudden. And then just go slow. And then just speed, go, you know, a couple little t and then slow. And do that and there'll be... You'll get a ton of fish. A lot of times, sometimes you have to burn it too. So play with your cadences, you know, try it slow, try it fast, try it moderate, try it with some erratic jerks, just reeling, and then, doo -doo. and then you're reeling, wait a while, now, doo -doo, you know, and that like out the blue that catches the bass, fight or flight, not really flight, but, you know, eat or not. And it's like, are you going to eat me now or what? So it can kind of force that bite out of the bass that may be following the lure, which is why they say when you're throwing like an S waiver and you believe there's some bass stacked up somewhere, you've seen them, when you get near them or when you feel the bass has been following it, you give it a twitch or two because all of a sudden the lure pops around and like faces the bass and the bass has to decide, am I eating you or not right now? And so, and then you can still turn around and start reeling, and that bass can still decide to eat it. But a lot of the times that out-of-the-blue startling mo motion will trigger a strike. 
and it will do the same thing in crankbaits and in spinnerbaits and a rigs, which we'll talk about pulsing them, you know, and giving them little pulses and things. So this shoreline is perfect for cranking and spinner baiting to cover it fast if you want to cover water and actually catch some nice fish that people aren't fishing for because it doesn't have any really nice looking juicy spots really and the ones that are people will go to all the rocks and the big rocks and all the stuff that draws people to them yeah there'll be fish on them but this cruddy looking stuff will actually hold a ton of fish passing through and you can really capitalize on that nighttime i did a awesome i had a great time out there spinner baiting and using a 12 foot diving crankbait and it was just the just the, the shite i had a ton of blast so all right let's jump into covering the rest of the lake and uh, then we're going to get into some lures so that you can talk we can talk about any old lake pedro maloney's you know tulick or a lake in the east coast clear lake you know Whatever, a pond, a river, if you, we want to talk any kind of lake or subject, we can do that. Um, I just want to finish breaking McClure down fully. So thanks for our new member tonight, JJ NorCal74. I want to say appreciate it. Uh, yeah, this type, uh, this time of year, I'm usually using something like a uh, a shad so in early spring sometimes even early summer through spring i use a, a crawdad usually a crankbait that's red so like the biggie papa cold-blooded or the biggie papa delta crawl those are my go-to's now as soon as i shift over from now the bass aren't on necessarily crawdads they're eating a couple different things so right now in the cycle of life bass fry are in the millions and there's a there's just big old clouds and schools of them so the bass fry are a heavy heavy target for the smaller males right now because the bass fry may only be you know this big so the one and two pounders are gorging on bass fry and anything else small that they can eat like that the bigger fish are still going to be eating things like trout they're going to be eating things like uh mostly bluegill related as well and shad so um right now the shad and the trout a lot of the fish like that have gone deep so bass what happened is the bluegill spawn after the bass while the bass fry are real small the bluegill are still doing their thing they spawn in like june you know sometimes july so then they're guarding their fry doing their thing july even into August a little bit. So there's this magic bluegill moment. That's where another time the crankbait will shine. So you can get two types of uh, striker reactions. And you will have big mama bass that are eating bass fry as well. So that's why I go to a what I like to call a fish pattern or a fish color. You know what I mean? It's not necessarily that it's a shad color, I'd say. It's fish. So a fish isn't green or brown or purple, right? Like a worm. If I was going to throw a worm, green, brown, pumpkin, something like that, or purple or margarita mutilator or whatever, right? So I'm saying I'm using colors with whites and greens, with whites and this, with whites and blacks. So, yeah, shad, I would use uh, even trout colored. I'd use uh, even bluegill color, and I would use baby bass colors. But I would stay away from the reds and the, the oranges right now. Um, it's just not my, unless again, you're in areas like the Delta, or if you're in areas that have heavy crawdad in um, crawdad uh, populations, then those oranges and reds, especially if the shells are matching the color, right? Then yeah, definitely. Um, that's a go-to for sure. It's a given. But um, right now, McClure, it would be, uh, it would be, yeah, it would be like a fish color, you know, so I would be picking any one of those to throw, but I would probably be looking for something in the bluegill color um, because that's an all-around bass target any time of year, any place, any time, any day. It's like a bass is an enemy, and they like eating them to a certain extent. Um, they are what do you call it, a, a, a spined fish or whatever you call it. So, like, bass can only eat bluegill so big 
bass so big and other certain fish that have spiky fins. But if it's a soft fish like a trout, they can eat much bigger versions of those. So that's why you got like 16 inch swim baits. But her, uh, for example, like a, uh, um, uh, but a, but a bluegill, a bass is not going to eat a bluegill this big. I mean, a 14 or 12 pounder might try, um, but those are the ones usually you see the bass dead, like an eight to 10 pound bass dead because it tried to eat like a one pound bluegill because those spikes get stuck up and then the fish gets stuck in the, in the fish's mouth. So bait selection, when I use a bluegill bait, I'll use one that's uh, kind of like, you know, like a baseball shape size basically uh but that's again why like if you're going with a big swim bait right but that's why a crankbait you know that biggie papa pattern that that size that that profile is is about as wide as a baseball it's not as round but it's it's you know a nice pattern it's a nice size so biggie papa square bill or even uh like i said a deep diving or a medium diving crank especially right now um, it wouldn't hurt to have all three. So I would have a square bill so that um, kind of got off on a tangent, but let's just say we had some shoreline and uh, <clears throat> sorry, say we had some shore and there was just this ultimate juicy point. <clears throat> so what I want to do is Whatever, let's just say for some reason I'm approaching it from this direction. Right? I'm approaching this point. So there could be fish, in my opinion, starting at like if this is a really good point, let's say there's a lot of current, or there's just some some good reason. Uh, this is just like one of the only points in this little area. Like fish that are moving have to stop or go by it. Depending on sun, shade, and all that, I think your fish could start, you know, and you can get them dotted along here, but if there's a bunch of them or a stacking of them, they'll start off of the point, and then most likely there may be a lot along the point, right? Up to a certain, depending on the current direction, um, this is like where I would consider my prime zone, right? But I'm coming and I'm approaching it, right? Now, there could be fish, and again, let's say that 0 to 10, that 10 to 20, and then the 20 plus or something, right? So then I get my boat, I pull up, let's say I get about right here. I want all three of my crankbaits ready. I've got a square bill to go shallow. So I'm taking the square bill and I'm casting shallow like this. And I'm doing a bunch of casts along the shoreline as close to I can as I can get to rubbing my bed, bumping into all kinds of stuff. Same thing. And then until it's over obvious open water. Then I'm going to my eight to twelve foot dive in one. And I'm going to throw that one same way, right? Then I might take my 20 foot diver and then throw that one like this so that if those bass are in those different strike zones, so they're on this point, but they could be in different areas of this in these strike zones. And then as I pull my boat, I'm going to fish that way, all in like that. And then as I approach this, I'm going to swing real close, try to get as close as I can. And I'm going to fish this point like the same way. Bunch with my square bill like this, medium, and then deep diver. And then as I approach it, I might pop out a little bit with it to keep my cast going like this. So as, as I go this way, I need to kind of come away from the shore a little bit to get my cast to, to maintain a parallel with this point, if that makes sense. And then I'm doing it with my square bill, my medium and my deep. And if I'm on like a reactionary kick, that's what I'm doing. And I'm covering shore and then I'll pick up and I'll go to the next spot. Or I'll do that 
Now I might have caught a fish or two. And then I put this crankbait down. And I say, okay, no more crankbait. And I say, well, then I got two with the crankbait. Heck, yeah, I might do the same thing now with top water, similar. But now I might do a jig, right? I might do a jig or a drop shot or some finesse. That I am going to, instead of pulling my boat like this, because at a craggly, nasty, rocky place like McClure, running a bottom balancer directly parallel is immediate. You're going to get snagged. So one of the best ways to fish this is at a 45. So just cast at the shore and bring your lure down, but at a 45. And you're just going to have to make multiple casts. So you, you swing your boat around, you know, make sure you're pointed a certain way. And you swing it around. And when you're bottom bouncing, you're going to want to fish like that. I don't recommend parallel fishing with a bottom bouncer unless it's like weightless or something, right? Because maybe a drop shot with an ultra light weight, but the way that there'll be rocks and crags and stuff, you're guaranteed to pull your something into a nasty snag. So uh, when bottom bouncing, I tend to go, I tend to go to this style. When power fishing a reaction, that goes right out the window and you need to get shallow. And so the thing is, is if you've got a good spot, fish it, maybe you go like this, right? And you go like that. What you want to do is, sorry, let me, let me correct myself. Power fish it first, right? So if there's fish shallow and, and, and they're there, and you come across and you're throwing crankbaits or power or top water jerk bait, whatever, and uh, you whack a few, those are usually going to be your bigger, more aggressive fish. But even not, and let's say there's fish there, if they're down in 10, 15, if they're hugging the rock, then you didn't really do any damage by coming through. Even if you spooked them a little bit, they'll come back. Go back around. So let's say you caught two or three. So you crankbait first, or you top water first, or you do your power fishing, right? Then, if you caught a few fish on it, go back around and now throw a jig at it or throw a drop shot at it. And if you get more, maybe do it again with another lure and, to, and pay attention to your fish finder, all that stuff. But till the bite really dies down, then take off and go to the next spot. You'd be surprised how many fish one spot can hold. Uh, a lot of fish. Trust me, a lot. So let's get back to McClure and break it down. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate everybody. Whoa, whiteboard's falling everywhere. I had to kind of come up with an improvised little whiteboard holder. So I'm using two of the kids' bikes. So thanks, everybody, for the donations. Uh, got another. Uh, uh, appreciate you, JJ NorCal. Thank you. And RC Creative. Whack some nice bass on a Z-Man pop chat yesterday. Swam it like a glide bait. And then... Oh, heck yeah. That's one heck of a good way to do it. Uh, uh, Buffalo whacked one like that at McClure. Like the biggest fish of the day came on the exact same way. A uh, nose hooked fluke, you know, kind of like a glide bait or a jerk bait, soft jerk bait. And uh, just a few feet under the water or a foot under the water, slow sink, just kind of pop, 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 and uh, killer. So. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to get back to McClure. Now we're going to start at uh, uh, Boat Club and Temperance. So Boat Club kind of goes you know, random stuff. Like there's the pump that goes down. And then there's this point that comes out real far like that. And then there's another one that comes this way. But this one goes out real far, right? And then it goes around in here, and then it goes into the back, and it goes back the other way. And uh, then over here, there's the point this way. There's a ramp, and then it goes this way. The ramp's right here, McClure Point ramp.
these are like the islands or no these are the waterfall the island maybe right here to Barrett South let's say and uh, these are those points I was telling you about now temperance should be uh, it's like this next one right here yeah and then it goes back in some more this way this gap's probably a bit bigger too, by the way. Not that shallow, not that shallow across. But Temperance would be back in this way. Boat Club is down here. McClure North, I think it's called, right? Is right here the launch North launch ramp. Um, out of all this right here, I was telling you this is like a highway, a main highway. So definitely the the point here, or if it's not, might maybe. Um, geographically it's a little bit this way more but this main point that goes into temperance and then the one that's like right before it and there's also one that kind of does like a u-shaped thing like this and then goes in they'll be on this point or sometimes th this is like a depression that goes down they'll be in the they'll be in this little valley kind of like right here uh, this point right here is magical wonderful all around like this uh, this point is just loaded with fish usually all in here five pounders three pounders giants I got an eight and a half right down here in the corner um, if you were to come out of the McClure point launch and look directly to the left there's a cut it goes back in that way and right in the cut 35 feet deep in the winter I got drop shotted me one so out of this whole area, I really just hammer the shite out of the Boat Club Main Lake Point right there on this side, not this side. And then across from here, I, whoa, we keep losing this. I keep, I, uh, I damage these points and a bit of this shoreline. And uh, this isn't correct because it swoops in. And when the lake is full, there's like a shortcut you can drive across to get to temperance this way but when the lake it starts lowering you can't go that way anymore and you have to come around it so this isn't uh, geographically correct my apologies it's all from memory so um but uh i love my lake mcclure so Yeah, this point right now, unfortunately, is so out of water, it's not the ticket right now. This point is this super huge long point, and when the, the water is so low, when it's higher, the fish will hang out way, because the point right now is like super far out, right? So this point is just badass when the lake is full to like moderately full, even medium full. But right now with it really being low, this point is not where I'm just breaking kind of the whole lake down. I would probably fish more along this side right here. It's got a lot of the sun. Yes, I know, but it's like a highway side. It's a straight shot. This side of the lake has a lot of turns and curves. It goes back into Barrett South ramp. Um, there's the big island. So if the fish are coming from the south end of the lake and they're moving north, it's a quick direct shot this way. Um, I don't know, but I think fish kind of have like game trails, right? Like 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 uh, game does, and they know they got like highways, right? And then as the lakes change, those highways kind of change too. But uh, this shoreline can be good to crank, spinner bait, and just to jig fish, kind of move fast and cover it. Stop on the point, stop on the little divots and cuts and stuff, uh, but don't give it too much time if it's not producing. Now going into Temperance and going into McClure. So really in this area, inside of Boat Club, inside of the whole McClure North Lawn Tramp area, on the main lake point, that's some of my favorite stuff. And then the end of the island here, some of this shoreline. Um, but you, tend, you can tell I'm going to skip a lot of this. That's not necessarily my favorite part of the lake to fish. Um, I'll check in. But like I said, when I do, it's usually power fishing, and it's that other opposite shore. I, I fish this other side, too. It just depends on lake level because um, there's a lot of good stuff on this other opposite side, too. 
it just it's all it's all relative to lake level <clears throat> now temperance uh let's talk temperance and mcclure point so uh we're gonna draw it all shriveled and small now so mcclure point let's say um it goes it goes back like this and then there's a point like this comes around Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we'll do McClear Point first. Clear points a big area. Sorry guys, bear with me here on my ugly drawing. But uh, then you have an island right here. And then you have another little island right here. Oh no, that's part of the same one. And uh, the houseboats kind of sit all in here. Um, this isn't quite this big. This island would probably be down here more, actually. This would be a little lower. Temperance would be across the way. This is headed to the dam. Now, right, right off the bat, as soon as you launch, let's say the launch is right here. This is McClure uh, South Ramp. Right away, go straight across and fish this point and all out it because there's a like a rock pile off the point because the point's super long. So fish here, fish off of the point, and uh, fish this whole thing when it's underwater, when it's out of water. This shoreline right here can be really fun to just bruise down it and throw jigs. So can... Uh, this shoreline all down here can be really fun to just cruise down and throw jigs. There's a floating dock right here with the pump. You can cruise down this whole shore and throw jigs. Uh, the whole point right here is just you could throw jigs, drop shot, Ned rig, killer. All around this island is killer. Then you've got the houseboats. So if you don't have anyone in the houseboat, you pull up alongside it and you throw jerk baits, crank baits, square bills, top water stuff like that around the side of them. And uh, this whole point here is loaded with bass usually, all the way going to the dam. This whole little area in in their McClure Point can be off the hook. Actually, it's not always. Sometimes it can be cruddy. But uh, McClure Point can be, oh, where did the thing go? It can be basically, whoa, there it is. It can be so fun that you don't ever leave it. So there's been times when I launch and I just start my little milk run and I do so good 
between here and here, just in this little thing, that then all I do is I fish in here all day. And I just do that, and I kill it. So not all the time, but that's McClure Point South Ramp. Spillway, when the spillway is higher, there's a rock wall where it does a concave, and as the water pulls out and also drains down, there's these big boulders and rocks. Really killer over here. There's another train tunnel over here that's killer. There's a couple of points that also extend out really far underwater that are really killer. So there's a lot of good stuff out here. Uh, just depends on lake level. So, uh, but McClure Point South South Ramp is is awesome. Now we're gonna talk temperance and cotton, and we're all done. Woo wee! I've been yapping for a minute. We're almost done tonight on eight forty five. Goodness, folks, breaking down McClure took a while. So uh, apologize. We'll we'll hang out a little longer and we'll talk and just kick it. So. Hopefully you guys find this video informative. I'm giving you guys my spots. Um, again, there's spots I probably forgot. Like there's some pump houses, there's structures, there's like things that you can obviously see when the lake's full, they're killer. So um, just mark them on your graph. When the lake's this low, everything you can see that just looks killer, you know where you can see the lake's full, mark it on your graph. If the lake's not full and it's out, fine. But when the lake gets full, you'll have all the magic. You'll have all the best of the stuff marked. And then when it's low, you'll also see, like right now, where all the good stuff's at. The bridge, the old dam I'm about to show you right now. So now we're going to say, uh, coming around this down here is that point. And... Uh, it wraps around and then it does like a kind of looping point. There's a road bed that goes along it like this. And then it comes back out and there's a point and then another point. And then it comes to the pump house back here. And then this is the dam. And then across you have a spot where it goes out to a big point and then wraps around and then another big point. And then it starts to head this way. Well, the old dam is underwater, and it's like right here. It's like out here on this point, or this one. I forget. It's one of these points. So um, I think it's this. It's not quite this far out, but I don't think it's the first point. I think it's the second one. So it might be like like this kind of. Yeah, I think it goes like that. There's a couple points in here, too. Pump house is down here. Dam's right there. This is the old dam. Cotton Creek's this way, right? And uh, then you have these uh, long, steep points. This is the shallow stuff right here going up into cotton. And, uh, and then it kind of wraps around. And this is into temperance. And... When you come around from McClure North, it does like this kind of. Uh, it comes to that main, main McClure point, and you come out this way. The buoys are like right here, and uh, there's an island out here. And uh, sometimes this shore can be pretty good too, even when the lake level's low. Fish are, are moving around. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. So fish move around. Um, they use, like, highways, right? So sometimes on this plain stuff, you have a lot of fish that are, let's say, headed from one end of the lake to the other, and you can catch them in their migration, and just, or they're just moving around with bait fish down there. Um, and then sometimes you get a lot of nothing. So check it out. Check your fish finder, your poles, your bites. If you're not getting a lot, move or do something different, right? Um so this main lake point on the dam, believe it or not, has a lot of fish that stack on it. Uh, the very first one that's kind of the plainest, ugliest one has a lot of fish. But they're usually not huge, but they, there's some, I've caught some three pluses out of there. So this, and then there's that long point, right? Well, that first kind of swooping round one that has the, there's a dirt road that comes along 
and you can start to see it right now. I think it's exposed, but then it starts going deeper and deeper and deeper, and it runs all the way down to the dam. And so it, that dirt road becomes a shelf at a certain point on this shoreline over here. There's all kinds of craggly rocks and nasty stuff. The points, because the water levels are so low, they're mostly just, now they're just kind of almost sheer rock wall, but there's still a lot of good bass to be had over here. Um, another thing, this is, oh, sorry, on all these points right here. Now, um, the once the old dam is out of water, you can't get on the other side of it, right? Not, so the, Right now, I think it's still underwater, but when you can and you can go past it, the uh, <clears throat> one of the tricks I've been told to do, and they caught a six-pound spotted bass, is go to the dam, right, to the main actual dam. Start in the corner and work your way down. Take a jig with a little trailer, right, cast it up right on one inch of water, and just barely drag it or tug it just enough to make it fall. And then if you feel it stop, just keep doing that. And then usually you don't have to do anything. You just kind of touch it and then let it go, and it just tumbles. Like a, like, a, like like somebody falling down a set of stairs. And, and so the dam's like this, but because it's like water, it doesn't just, right? So it like naturally just... tumbles and falls and rolls and makes and goes down the dam slow and bass will see that and then will boom they'll hit, they'll pin it and they'll hit your lure they think it's a crawdad or a dying bait fish or something and uh jigs on the dam caught a six pound spotted bass if i remember correctly i think i was told to do it in the winter or some kind of like fall uh because of the dam holding heat and i did it and i got a six pound spotted bass so Killer technique right there. Now, on the other side of the dam, in this arm here, and all along these points headed into Cotton Creek, these points and all that rocky stuff over there can be killer to deep water crank to throw jigs and to throw drop shots. Killer, killer stuff over there, all that stuff heading into Cotton. This main lake stuff is plain and nasty, never really did too good. But that's also, I think, a big swim bait spot. That's where there's trout eaters, I believe, because you get that's just a big highway for anything coming out of cotton. It's going to move north. Instead of shooting this way to come this way, it's going to have to go around this. And there's some really steep, nasty, but it's kind of plain, like real shaly, like just all the same consistency where there's not a lot of structure, let's say, but there's some really sharp, steep stuff that comes off right here with a couple islands as well so this is i have actually caught some decent fish there um just only certain times of the year and i think it was on jigs if i remember correctly um but i've heard, and i think a crankbait then i've heard that people swim bait there as well but i don't know now going around here into temperance I've done some damage on that first point to where you start to head in. And then there's like another island out here. There's buoys. All of the houseboats start right there. We'll get into that. So all along this shoreline, I've done okay at some sporadic spots. This point here across from Temperance, a couple of the points between Temperance and Cotton out here on the main have, have been okay for me. I've done well on some jigs and some cranks over here. Off of that, we can get into Cotton Creek. We're going to do that uh, right after we do Temperance, and then we're done for the night. We're going to chill for a little bit, and I'm just going to finish this one. Since uh, we're doing McClure, I don't want to have to break it down again and do another one, so we'll save. Maybe uh, we'll do uh, Don Pedro or something next. And I don't want to do every night one of these unless they catch on and you guys really like them then I can do them, you know, every other night or something or try to include this more in my presentation. So appreciate you guys' feedback. Thanks for the support. Um, smash that like button if you get a chance. All right, now we're going to talk about temperance. We're almost done here. Let's see. There's my cap. Let's see if the smaller black pen works better. Uh -huh. So let's kind of start. 
on that one point where there's, I think, no, there's a saddle. There's like a saddle back or like the, what do you call it, where, uh, concaves. And then, yeah, it goes in like this. I think it actually goes like this. And normally you can shoot over this and then the other shoreline is over here and it does all that. Um, the lake's real low right now, but normally you can actually shoot around this at a certain point into, so it goes like this. And then usually this is kind of like an island right here and you can shoot across into temperance. But right now, this is all like shore, and it goes across like this, and then there goes a long point or really starts to go into temperance, and it's it's a real long tapering one. It's probably not that big. We'll do more like that. And uh, houseboats are all in here. <clears throat> And then the other, the other point goes like this, and then it wraps around. Then there's like I think another point like this. And there's a couple more, and then it goes back. It goes back to the actual temperance, like creek, this way, and then another couple cuts over here. We're gonna draw. We're gonna zoom that in. There's like these big buoys that hang out right here, and then the houseboats. We're all like out here, right? So the houseboats are all out here, stuff like that. All right, so this point, again, I was reiterating at the tip of temperance going into it can be killer. This shoreline, you can do really good drop shotting, jigs, stuff like that. And uh, during spawn, we've seen a 12-pounder. A lot of monsters, something that was about 12, something like that along here. There's a couple of trees and some nice little stuff over here. There's a cut back here like this with a couple of trees and stuff on it. Now, this is a big, long, shallow flat that starts to get steep a little bit around the way, and the bass will hang out way offshore off of this thing. And I'll sometimes I'll sit and I'll tie myself up to this buoy. It might be in 20 feet or 15 feet or whatever, depending on lake level. And I can cast way out here in between these houseboats and be in only like 45, 50 feet of water and work it up this big shallow flat and just tear them up on drop shots and edge rigs and stuff like that. You know, you know, sometimes you do have to finesse fish and clear and you can catch a ton of numbers and still even some good size. But I mean, if you're tournament fishing, you go for your five, right? But if you really want to get big fish, then you start doing things like fishing these, uh, houseboats, you get shallow and you crank bait in top water and you, you fish it kind of like the delta, more parallel fishing, less bottom bouncing and con and finesse. Uh, and if you are bottom bouncing, more lures like jigs, and big worms, stuff like that. Uh, otherwise, you're throwing crank baits, spinner baits, jerk baits, top water, stuff like that. And you're power fishing and you're moving and covering water, looking for aggressive, hungry feeding fish. Um, so temperance, again, can be loaded in a lot of different areas. But the main point going in, there's a couple of little secondaries off here. The shoreline is good. The shoreline is all right. This main point is good here. This little point here is good. This point here is good. Um, this shoreline is decent heading back in. So there's a lot of decent stuff here. There's a couple of islands out here depending on... Uh, I forget where they're at. I think they're more this way. But there's a couple islands in Temperance that you can find. <clears throat> Rock piles, whatever you want to call them. <clears throat> now, in the real back of Temperance, it winds back. It cuts back to the left comes around like this there's even like old structures and things wraps around opens up comes around comes around this way opens up big rock walls and stuff there's a canyon this way that comes in like this goes around and then this is that big shallow point down here and then it goes around like this and it opens up and then 
think there's like a couple of points and some stuff. And then it goes back into another cut back here. And then a point. And then I think another, there's another cut. And then this is uh, the big bay where all the houseboats are at, stuff like that. So back in here and all along these walls here in the steep canyon area, really good. Uh, sometimes the fish will pull up 60 feet. You can catch them in the winter here in this big, deep pit right here. Big, steep rock walls all along this side that are good. This point has been killer. All down in here has been really good for me. All along right here has been good. I have kind of avoided and sucked. Not done very well on the transition between that flat and about halfway or three quarters down. I don't even bother with that plane stretch there. I wait until the rock changes and it gets to be the big boulders and stuff like that in this section. And then all through here, I work all of this and I work all of this. And then I've come along and done some good on a couple of little like mini points out on this little pole, this little area. And then there's like a main lake point. I've caught some good fish all on video too, by the way. And then in here during spawn and stuff, I've done really good. In a couple of these cuts, I've done really good with top water and on the, the main lake points out here. Um, it just there's some stretches that I avoid, but that's temperance for you. It's a real good spot. Now, last but not least, let's break down one of my favorites, cotton. And I don't have all the names of all the little shoots and all that stuff. Uh, labeled but let's say this is that real steep wall and then there's like shallow super shallow flat and then there's a couple of bays kind of like this a couple of shallow openings and then there's like this big point that goes like this goes this way then it goes this way goes back in a bit i think right here and then it goes back to the Cotton Creek there. You have this spot here. And then there's an arm that runs back in here like this. You have this big main lake or main point here. And then you have this deep gouge with all these nasty boulders and kind of like a cove almost type thing right here. And then it goes into another creek cut right here. And then you have one that goes here. And then you have a ton of shallow shelf down this way. And this is kind of mid-cotton. Um, actually, there's a there's on this side down here, there's a couple of big cuts, right? The dam would be down here. And there's actually some nice cuts that are in here that are really nice before you get to this stuff, too. So I don't know where to begin here because I've murdered them. Um, all along this stretch here mostly this is where i've done a ton of my damage in cotton creek a ton of it in this arm right here i've done uh really good all on this main uh big steep deep point and then all oh, a ton of fish in this little like cove like thing with all the big rocks and bolt and it makes like a cove and there's a gate or the like, old fence that comes down into the water in there all that I used, I tore it up all in there, all in both all of these cuts. I've done really good in main lake, not so much, but in all the cuts on that right side, I've done really good. On this side over here, I've done better on the main lake points more so than back in the bays. So I've done okay on a couple of the bays on that left side though. Um, but I've also done pretty good on some of these points of some real nasty big boulders. But a lot of this stuff is big, long, tapering, nothing with occasional boulders and rocks. So hit the occasional boulders and rocks on this side. But this point right here and all along the shoreline and in here. And then there's the white, if you guys know the trail of white boulders would be, I think, right here. And I fish always the white boulders right there in cotton and tear them up. And I go in here. If you go in here, it looks like this. So cotton comes around the back, and it kind of has a swooping, kind of has a swooping back like this. 
and it has like some real steep walls like this and then it has a point that comes around like this and then it opens up right back up in here it does it does a turn like this there's like a cove almost right here there's a like a couple good points kind of right here because this is all not to scale and there's some really good stuff all here in the back area back here in cotton is really good as well there's also a big tree that stands by itself back here depending on the water level it's really good to fish on the right hand side of cotton as well back in here so right on the right and then this would turn around to the left so cotton is one of my favorite arms you can catch them in the bays and in these creeks like these little cuts all suspended on shad you can catch them on the main lake points on the big rocks and boulders there so there's a lot of good stuff in cotton creek uh, i hope you guys enjoy my little breakdown of mcclure i know like i covered the entire damn lake really in a sense because it, and that's a lot of information but those are my spots pretty much um that's all from memory and what i can remember oh shoot that's all gonna fall but I'll tell you guys what Thank you guys for hanging out and watching. Sorry we ran a little late. Um, it's 9.06, so what we'll do is we'll probably see if we want to go a little bit longer. Um, or, you know, we only got three people on. Okay, cool. Wasn't even paying attention the whole time. I was just trying to teach and help. So hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, tonight's um, video. I will be doing Don Pedro, New Maloney's, and Tulick as well. So share this video, tag your friends, help the channel grow if you guys would. I appreciate JJ Norcal, our newest member. Big shout out to you. Thank you very much. Um, so let's read some of your guys' posts. Mostly it was you, so. <clears throat> what you like to use for that long point in the morning? Um, I like to use basically like a walking bait, top water, and then after that I go to a jig basically. Um, I kind of, uh, and then I'll drop shot that main lake. But there's a lot of rock there though, so I'd probably actually, to be honest, it would be probably a crank bait and a top water, like a whopper plopper or a walking bait. And then a crank bait, like a, a square bill up shallow, and then a medium to deep diver. And then if I know they're there, but I don't get them on that kind of stuff, fishing around for about 20, 30 minutes, I'm going to put my stuff away. And then I'm going to pull out the drop shot and fish into 20 to 60 feet. That big, long main lake point on the boat club has monster bass on it. So, uh -uh. so anyways... Thank you, JJ, NorCal, everybody else. We're going to go ahead and hop off for the night. I uh, want to give a big shout-out again to the new member. And uh, thanks, Curtis LaDuke, very much. Oh, yeah, McClure is a great lake. And uh, you got a fishing trip on me, pal, remember? So you did win a fishing trip. So, Curtis LaDuke, you have an open invitation. My boat's your boat anytime you want to go. We can hit any one of the lakes, the delta, any of the areas up. You just let me know. Get a hold of me on Facebook, email. Uh, let me know, and I'm glad to. Uh, I always honor my word, so I'm, I'm always excited to help out and to do my giveaways and stuff like that. So big shout out to everybody. And there's only two of you guys on right now, but um, Bass Fishing Lovers, my Facebook page, if you guys go over there, for our, uh, when we hit, um, I think we were going to do it when we hit 75. We're already there. So we're going to do a giveaway. And we got this uh, this backpack here, a tactical backpack. And uh, in it, we've got like a, you know, like a $100 reel or something like that. Uh, a Rev Ross, a Rev Ross uh, LT250, a Daiwa, or 2500, a Daiwa. So nice little reel here. Uh, so we're going to give this away with the backpack. Big shout out to Keeping It Real. He's the one that donated this. So we have an awesome family here. So I want to say thank you guys to everybody. Uh, hope you guys safe. Have a great weekend. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed tonight's content. Smash that like, subscribe again, share if you can. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. And we've got some cool videos coming up, so stay tuned. And we'll catch you on the next one. Bye out.